Who are we? We are the engineering and IoT CSD, which is the engineering um, and Internet of Things cardiovascular simulation device. So I'm going to pass it off to you for the introduction. So our system is actually the third generation of this device. Uh, each and every time it's been sponsored by Dr. Nepang Lee, a bioengineering uh, technical associate. Um, the additions from previous projects have been included in this one are the Internet of Things integration, as well as a machine learning training, which we were working with a PhD candidate for that one, and the new data illustration that we've done with MATLAB coding. So our customer requirements included, the, again, the full integration of the IoT system. This also included the wireless interfacing for diagnostic testing and access to the sensors and systems. This is part of our website design. Um, we also simulated and collected data on the pressure sensors, the short volume, and the ECG based on the pressure. <clears throat> and our, the, for the machine learning part, we were simulating an arrhythmia for the machine learning training. And this is based on the left ventricle, so we're working with the left ventricular fibrillation. Our customer requirements continued. Uh, so in the arterial for cardiovascular system, there's different kinds of arterial structures. We work with the synoic, hyperelastic, and elastic. And I'll let Armani explain those a little further later. The system was realizing also the laminar flow in the cardiovascular system, along with the diameter of the piping relative to those arterial structures and the pressure that will find in that system. So for the computer engineering requirements, again, the integration of IoT required us to do web design as well as data transfer with an email response that you'll get from the website after using the Google form. The integration of the automated system, so in each of those parallel lines that I discussed, there will be solenoids to open and close each different structure that you want to test. And then we've also got an activation and pattern operation of the pump, which is relative to the pressure that you find in the cardiovascular system. And then our data collection analysis is the collecting the pressure data, the converting it from the raw data to a readable PSI, and also graphing and smoothing that data for easily readable data trending. I'll pass it back to Armani for bioengineering. So us bioengineers have to understand different aspects of the project compared to computer engineers. So we have to understand the biological and physical um, changes that we, have to, what we see here. So we have to understand the different types of blood pressure. There's normal blood pressure, hypertensive, and hypotensive, which means high or low. We also have to understand uh, the proper stroke volume, or the volume of blood that gets pushed per beat of the heart, and the different fluid characteristics of blood. Blood has a special, uh, has things of suspension, and it also has a different viscosity than water, viscosity being your resistance to flow, or the internal friction. Now, we're, what we're trying to do is mimic the left ventricle. So we're trying to simulate the different artery types, which are elastic, hyperelastic, and phenomic. Regular healthy arteries are around 30% compliant. Now, this 30% compliant is what we have in our first one, which I will show in the design concept. We also have a hyperelastic, which is above 30% compliance, and then we have a synovic artery, which is a below 30% compliance, a very rigid artery. And we have to use those understandings to create and simulate this cardiac muscle. So there's two, there's two different types of components that we have here. We have hardware and we have software. So for the hardware, we have a pump, which is controlled by the software in conjunction with the pipe. We use solenoids, uh, which help us select which artery model we want to use, also um, connected by another pipe. And we use our Raspberry Pi, of course, which is a brand new device, along with a printed circuit board, which we've custom built. And we, lastly, we have pressure sensors, which will relay the data back to our end users. Now, for software, we use MATLAB for data analytics. We have Python, which is a back-end program. SOLIDWORKS 2017-2018 for our, uh, our, um, sorry, our part construction. And we use Google Sheets and Google Sites for our front-end program or our GUI, the graphics and the interface. Now, for our uh, uh, mechanical design, I'm going to use a laser pointer. I'm going to show you guys. Uh, this here is a pump. This is what mimics the cardiac function. It'll beat um, intermittently to simulate heart rate. Uh, these sections here, these six, are our solenoids. There's going to be two per artery to prevent, um, one to prevent backflow, and two to act as the arterial valves. And here are the three types of arteries, like I said earlier, the elastic, hyperelastic, and synovic. So firstly, we call our design. This design here was created uh, by one of our team members who's not here today. 
what he's done is created a housing for the one of the pies to be bracketed onto a board without, uh, for easy removal and replacement. In this design, uh, we're using a, a very basic clamping system to support the three different types of arteries. So there's three of them um, all in parallel. And what each of, them, uh, each of them does is it tries to hold steady the pipe while the fluid is flowing to reduce the noise that we get from the sensor. And lastly, we have these brackets that are on each of the 50, uh, 90 degree and 180 degree angle bends that we have in the pipe. The reason why this is important is every time the machine shakes, we get uh, an increase of noise. And we've used um, the math that we've done on the Bionet equation and on different sort of um, other simulations. It has to be all uh, on, one, on one plane. So this supports everything around four inches off the, the platform and keeps everything into one plane uh, in alignment. Now I will be passing it off to Charles for electrical system design. And we're going over the circuitry. So here we have the picture of the printed circuit board that uh, we built to be the main hub for the wiring for the pump, sensor, and voltage conversion circuitry. And, uh, it connects to it one Raspberry Pi using this 40 pin connector. Usually one. Uh, to wire our device is IoT. So we have a Raspberry Pi that uh, at 4 inches by 3 inches it is portable, uses only a few watts at maximum power, and then also is, uh, runs on a Linux based operating system which easily executes Python code, which is what is running our system. It also has a built in Wi Fi chip to connect to the internet automatically. So we also use Google Sites and Sheets. Every time a uh, simulation occurs, the data is automatically backed up to Google Sites and then secured by Google Security. And, uh, in Python, you can, act, you can talk to the Google API to communicate with Google Sheets to uh, uh, manipulate the data automatically. So here's a picture of our website and the, uh, the link to get there. So this is the main page that has a form on it. So you fill out the form, and if our device is on, you get put into the simulation queue. Once your uh, your queue spot is up, your parameters are going to be simulated, and the data is collected, uploaded to Google, and then you get an email with a link that has all your data in it, so you can view it. So uh, for the code part, we use Python and MATLAB. So uh, for for Python. We, uh, we chose this language because it has uh, easy parallel processing capabilities. We need to be controlling our pump routine to make the heart rate, community detecting sensor data, communicating over network and socket programming, as well as talking to the Google Sites API all at the same time. So for MATLAB, another uh, code we chose for it's easily uh, able to visualize the data. So what we do is once we get our data back from uh, Google Sheets, we can upload it into MATLAB, and then we can visualize it as a graph. MATLAB has built-in uh, data cleaning functions that we use to uh, clean the data once we got it, and then we can also compare the data cleaning functions. MATLAB also has the capability to run one-line commands to individually uh, access the pins on the Raspberry Pi for the past So uh, onto our data. So on your right or your left, right here, this is the initial data set. So our main goal was to simulate a pressure on the left ventricle, which has a smooth peak, it's not parabolic. So our initial data set is uh, the raw data is the red dash line, and our smooth data with three point moving average is the black line. So what we did was uh, a resistance that we have in the circuit of the pump controls the slope of the graph, of the pressure. So in this first data set, we have a fixed resistor, which corresponds to a fixed slope, which is why it increases and decreases at the same rate. So in order to get a smooth parabolic uh, peak, we would need to have a changing resistance while it's pumping. So in the, uh, this second data set right here, we have a, we implemented a variable resistor that we uh, programmed to change the resistance, which corresponds to a change in the slope as it's pumping. So you get you can get a smooth curve as the slope is changing over time. We're also comparing three to five for moving average. Here's a little in depth on our data analysis. The uh, 
different types of moving averages we compared. So uh, here and here, we programmed the pump to turn off. So we were trying to get like, a parabolic curve, but this was from our initial data set. So the pressure was going to drop rapidly when we turn the pump off. But uh, the five pump moving average in red doesn't keep the pause as much as we wanted. And in between the uh, cycles, it loses the pause and cuts off the corners here. So we went with the three pump moving average, so we would keep more of the pause. To our final data, so on the uh, over here is the rough pressure data, and then over here is the three-point moving average on the same data. So this is to illustrate how we got the uh, parabolic shape that was uh, very similar to the left ventricle pressure. And then here is the uh, like a snapshot of the data, so you can compare. I'll pass it on to our line for uh, experiments. All right, so we had a few different types of experiments that we had to go through. Uh, so number one, we had our flow rate experiment, where we had to prove the uh, stroke volume from the heart had to be um, identifiable or accurate to which we could produce the pump. And it had, uh, it had to be comparable to that of the circulatory system, in both velocity, viscosity, and volume, uh, which is a mass transfer. Now the pressure experiment, we had, uh, what we've done is we've sampled different points on uh, the piping to uh, see which, close, uh, which one closely resembles that of the heart and which one is more optimal. And then we just chose that position on all of them, which uh, we created to be as the center of each pipe. And then we use um, our, what we call our double line and triple line study, but in reality it's just an independent verification where we individually test each component um, separately and then we put them all together and we had to test them in different configurations to make sure that we didn't have any part failure. And if we did, we would be able to identify it directly. So let's talk. Uh, we had a very powerful start early on uh, last semester with our IoT concept completed. And our designs were done very, uh, very much so ahead of schedule. However, we did have a very rocky middle um, via winter break and a lot of delaying in shipments where a lot of the parts didn't come in. A lot of them had to come from overseas. And now with final completion, we have fully operational solenoids, a website with full functionality, and, and a now it has a, a bio page. And our, we have accomplished all of our response to this uh, requirements. Now, in conclusion, we were able to relate an ECG uh, uh, to pressure, and uh, we proved that the uh, heart rate or heart data can be mimicked. Now, the main idea is that we wanted to share data and ideas through IoT, where we could take this technology and open it to the world. It's not fair for us to keep it to ourselves. So, future generations want to integrate a porcine valve or a use of synthetic blood with protein suspension from our realistic um, readings, and the application of IoT on the different organ of choice. There's truly no limit to the potential here. Now, a few acknowledgments. We wanted to thank Dr. Depang Lee uh, as our advisor, um, Dr. Vance McCullough as our secondary advisor, and uh, Dr. Kingo Fan for uh, the different advice that he's given us for the semesters, and for Alec Morella for helping us with our MOSFETs. Thank you. Any questions?